Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker. My name's Matt. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I configure a basic URL filtering profile so that you can safely enable a web access policy and apply it to your security policy rules. I'm going to be doing all of this using a VM series Palo Alto Next Generation Firewall inside of VMware Workstation. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what URL filtering is, it's used to categorize websites by content type and malicious activity. When URL filtering is enabled, all web traffic is checked against Palo Alto Network's URL filtering database called PanDB. PanDB contains millions of websites that have been categorized. These URL categories can be used as a match criteria in your security policies, but more importantly prevents users from browsing malicious URLs, exploited web pages and watering holes where legitimate sites become compromised. Using URL filtering and App ID together is an invaluable tool for securing web traffic. So now we know a little bit about URL filtering. How does it actually work on the firewall? Well, when a user accesses a URL that they've not visited before, the firewall checks PanDB for the site's category and saves it in the firewall's cache. As the firewall saves new entries, any old URLs that have not been accessed recently are then removed. This provides an accurate reflection of the traffic within the network. So when the firewall checks PanDB for a URL, it also looks for critical updates such as URLs that have previously qualified as benign but are now malicious. Every 30 minutes, the firewall checks PanDB for such updates. Okay, so let me share some information about URL categories. At the time of recording, there are 72 URL categories. That's just too many to discuss individually on the video. However, I recommend visiting this Palo Alto knowledge base article. On this page, you'll find a list of URL categories with a detailed description and example websites for each of the categories. Another invaluable website is the Palo Alto tester site page, which you can find at the top of this knowledge base. So if you click on this link, this takes you to urlfiltering.paloaltonetworks.com. And from here, you can test how PanDB categorizes a given URL. So let's check it out. Let's use Brian Krebs' website, so krebssecurity.com. So if we pop the, the URL in here and click I'm not a robot, and then click search. And as you can see, the category is computer and, and internet info. And it's also categorized as low risk. It also provides a description of the website and other example websites that are in the same category. I'll put, put both these Palo Alto website links in the description. Okay, so just a quick reminder of the lab topology before we jump into this lab. This diagram is based on my Palo Alto firewall lab using VMware workstation video. If you haven't watched it yet, I strongly suggest watching it ASAP so you can follow along in labs just like this one. Okay, so to get you up to speed, you may have heard Iron Skillet being mentioned in my signature based security profiles video. So in summary, Iron Skillet templates are used to configure next generation firewalls based on existing best practice recommendations from Palo Alto Networks. With regards to URL filtering, Iron Skillet only blocks no malicious categories and not high risk categories such as copyright infringement. So in this lab, I'm going to use best practice recommendations from Palo Alto Networks and block the following categories. So that's going to be malware, command and control, phishing and greyware. However, this being said, you can change which categories you want to block to align with your web browsing policy. Okay, so I've logged into the firewall. So let's get started by going to the objects tab and then down to security profiles and then URL filtering. And what we're gonna do is clone this predefined default URL filtering profile by highlighting it and then clicking clone and then click okay. Then we're going to rename this to outbound URL, because this is going to be for outbound web browsing. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the site access column and click the down arrow, and then we're going to do set all actions to alert. And we're going to do the same for user credential submissions by going to set all credential submission actions to alert. Then we're going to search for malware, and we're going to change that to block. And the same for the user credential submission. And then we're going to do the same for command and control. 
So block, block, fishing, block, and block, and then finally, grayware. block and block and now we can click OK so you can see that there are now 68 alert categories so these any traffic that matches any of these alert categories will be logged in the URL filtering um, logs and then we've got the four block categories so malware command and control fishing and grayware okay so at this point we've configured the iron skillet best practices um, block categories but to take this a little bit further I would like to demonstrate um, by blocking two additional categories uh, this way it's easier to um, show you how effective this is when browsing to particular sites so if we go back into outbound URL and what we're going to do is we're going to look for hacking and we're going to block upon that category on both columns and also we're going to block gambling as i said it's it's easier to demonstrate instead of trying to go to a malicious site or a grayware site we can just block on these categories test um, on the windows 10 client and then uh, we can then uh, verify it so let's just click OK on that and uh, we can do some testing. Additionally, I'm going to create three custom URL categories which can be used in security rules and URL profiles. So this time we're going to go to custom objects um, and we're going to choose URL category and then we're going to create three new placeholders. So this is going to be blacklist and that's a URL list and click OK. And then we're going to add whitelist. and click OK and then for future use we're going to use custom no decrypt and then click OK. Okay before we add the URL filtering profile to the security profile group and to the security policy let's just check web access from the Windows 10 lab client so let's go to, I don't know, let's try bbc.co.uk um, to start with, BBC, and then just click on, yep, so we, we know that we can get to the BBC website. Um, let's try, um, we're going to do Kali Linux website, which is Kali.org, so Kali Linux, let's put that one in. Can we get to that? Yes, we can, no problem. And then finally, let's, let's try um, a gambling website as well, which let's try Sky Bet. So let's see. So this is an online betting website and we can access that as well. So this is expected. We can browse the sites. Uh, now we can go back to the firewall and check the logs. Before we look at the logs, let's just quickly review the policy. So we've got a general internet access policy um, allowing DNS, Google Base, SSL and web browsing. So if we click the drop down and go to log viewer, it will filter on just this rule. And as you can see, we've got general internet access traffic. So and that, that's the traffic that we tested the sites on. If we go to the URL filtering log, you can see that we've got no logs because we've got no URL filtering profile attached to the policy. So if we take a look at this, this profile here, it's called Outbound. So this is the Outbound Security Profile Group. And if we go to the object, um, which is the Security Profile Group here, and we go to Outbound, you can see that we've got no URL filtering profile currently attached to this profile. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. 
we're going to add the URL filter and profile to the security profile group called Outbound. So we're already in object and we're going to click on Outbound. And we're going to simply click the arrow for the drop down and we're going to create the Outbound URL. And then click OK. So we already know that the Outbound security profile group is attached to the security profile rule. So we're just going to commit the change and then we're going to test again from the Windows 10 client and then see what the outcome is and take a look at the logs. Okay, so now we're ready to do some testing. I'm over at the Windows 10 lab client. Let's open up a browser and uh, let's go to uh, bbc.co.uk so we can access that fine. Um, what about um, Kali.org? So www.kali.org. Unable to access that site. And what about um, Skybet? So if I click on that original link, I can't get to Skybet either. So let's go and take a look at the logs on the firewall. So let's go to the monitor tab and we're going to go straight into the URL filtering logs here. And as you can see, the logs are now starting to come through because we've added that security profile to that security profile group, which is attached to that general internet browsing policy. So the first site we went to was BBC. We saw that web page, so we don't need to worry about that. We know that's working and it wasn't blocked. But let's take a look at let's take a look for the Cali um, Cali.org website, um, which is down here. And as you can see, the category is hacking, and the action was block URL. So we can go in there by clicking on the magnifying glass, and we can expand that window. And the, all the information, general information is here. So action block URL, the application was SSL, the rule was general internet access, and the category was hacking. Um, down here is our two logs. So we've got our traffic log, which is the SSL allowed traffic, and then also the URL log, which is the block URL. So we can close that. And if we take a look at the um, Skybet, which was this one here, this was category gambling again we block that um, and you can see it's block URL and if, again if we open up by click on the magnifying glass and expanding the window and we've got the information again so the action was block URL it was the general internet access rule again uh, but this time the category was gambling and then the two logs so that's worked so we blocked those two additional categories um, we can do some further testing. So let's go and take a look at that now. So just to summarize, we are currently blocking the four iron skillet URL categories, malware, command and control, phishing, and grayware. And then we have two additional categories, gambling and hacking, that are valid for testing purposes. So using the custom categories that I created earlier, the black and white list, I'm going to add bbc.co.uk to the blacklist and block access, even though it's categorized as news, which is normally allowed. And then I'm going to add both Kali.org and Skybet to the whitelist, which will be configured to allow. Essentially, I'm creating URL fields and exceptions. So let's do that now. Okay, so first of all, let's open up blacklist. And we're going to add star.bbc.co.uk the star is a wild card it will match anything before the bbc.co.uk so it could be http or https for instance so let's click ok on that and then let's open up the whitelist and we're going to add star.cali.org and also the Skybet site, which is star.m.skybet.com. And then click OK. 
So now we go to our URL filtering profile and we open up Outbound URL and you can see we've got these two custom URL categories listed here. So ignoring the custom node decrypt, that's for a future video, but the blacklist. So what we're going to do on here is we're going to change that to block. And then the whitelist, we're going to set that to alert to make sure it's allowed and also going to generate a log for the allowed traffic and then click OK and then commit. So once that's committed, we can go back to the Windows 10 clients and retest the access to those websites and take a look at the outcome. Okay, so we're now over at the Windows 10 lab client. So let's just test access to those three websites that we previously tested. So let's go to BBC. Originally this was accessible. So now we can't get to bbc.co.uk because that's been added to the blacklist. Um, let's try Kali, Kali.org. Now we can get to Kali.org, but originally that was categorized as hacking, but we've added this to the whitelist, so this is now allowed. And then finally, let's go to um, the Skybet, so the, the gambling site, so Skybet, and um, we're going to click on this. And this isn't working, uh, which is strange. So what we need to do is just troubleshoot that, um, maybe a little bit more behind how this website works. So let's go back to the firewall and take a look at the logs and see if we can work out why we can't get to this site still. Okay, so we're back on the firewall. Let's go to the monitor tab. Let's take a look at the URL filtering logs. So, okay, so we can still see some block URLs. So what is actually causing this? So it looks like there are multiple URLs being used to serve that web page. So you can see the m.skybet.com, but you can also see bet.sbgcdn.com. So what we're going to need to do is um, is adjust the uh, whitelist for these these URLs and add this other additional one to it. So let me just click on, let me just open up the magnifying glass and let's have a look at the information. So there's the URL there. If I click those little three dots, I should be able to copy and paste those. So I'm going to go back to the objects and I'm going to go into our whitelist. I'm just going to adjust this one. I'm just going to have it so it's star.skybet.com and then I'm going to add um, star dot I'm going to just add the sbgcdn.com without the slash on the end so I'm allowing anything before those um, those domains those URLs so I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to commit that change and then we can go back to the uh, Windows 10 lab client and then we can retest to see if that's resolved the issue. Okay, so we're back on the Windows 10 lab client. Let's open up a browser and let's go to bbc.co.uk. Okay, so we know that site was blocked because it was added to the blacklist. Let's go to kali.org. So this is now allowed, even though this was categorized as hacking and it was blocked originally, we've added this to the whitelist, so that's working. So finally, we go to Skybet. This one was being a bit problem problematic. Uh, let's click on that. Okay, so this is now working. So this one was a bit tricky to get working, so there was actually two URLs that we needed to add to the whitelist to, to get the full function for functionality of the site. Um, so that's good. So that is the right outcome. That's been a successful lab. Let's go back to the file once more, review the logs and wrap this up. Okay, so we're back over the firewall. Uh, before we review the logs again, let's go into objects and let's go into the URL filtering profile and let's go to the outbound URL profile that we created. So we added the blacklist and we've added the whitelist. 
So just to make it clear that these sit above the normal predefined categories and these are processed first. That's why when you add a URL that is um, in the uh, allow categories and you block it, it's going to be processed top down and it's the same for the whitelist. So this is how it's how the firewall processes it. These custom URL categories come before the predefined categories. So we go back to the uh, monitor tab and look at the URL filtering. If we look for the whitelist category and we filter the logs on that, you can see that Skybet and Cali Org um, have been added to the whitelist category. Normally both of these would be blocked. So Skybet will be categorized as um, betting and Cali Org um, would be categorized as hacking but we had a requirement to make an exception. So we added them to the whitelist, which allowed us to browse them. And then in reverse, we created a, a blacklist. So if we search for blacklist, and then we filter logs on that, you can see we added bbc.co.uk to the blacklist and blacklist is um, blocked, even though bbc.co.uk would be categorized as news, and the predefined categories would allow that. Again, we've made an exception and we put this in the blacklist and which is blocked. So this has been an interesting lab. Um, I hope you found it um, interesting and useful, um, but that's the end of it. And I will see you on the next one. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Over the next coming weeks, I will be uploading more videos where I will be sharing more content about Palo Alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them. If you like this video, I'm sure you know what to do by now, but just in case you don't, please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.